Good. Morning, all. Is every, can everybody hear me? Can I just get, can somebody give me a, yeah, thumbs yeah, up? Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. What time are we on? I think yes. we'll a couple, couple, couple more minutes and we'll start. We're recording this as well, so we can, uh, we can send it through to you all as well. Yeah, should we just go? Yeah, I think we can go. go. So, I've said morning, I'll say it again. So, we're just going to go through today just the the five um, ingredients that we specified that you need to use for the dessert for Young Restaurant Team. And we're going to show a few techniques. We've just got about a half an hour, 40 minute demo. Um, we've got a bit of stuff made. We're going to make some of it for interview just to go through and show what you can do with it and what's achievable. Um, and then once we finish the demo, we'll have um, questions for about 20, 30 minutes. If anyone's got any questions or anything they want, we're going to record all of this, which David will send you all out a link to that you can use to go back to. I'm also going to email you all the recipes for everything we've done today and our recipe booklet for all our plant-based vegan products that we sell and, and that. And also anybody who needs any assistance with anything, if it doesn't work, follow this demo, please get in touch with Vicky and I and, and we will help with any of the technical skills to, to create. Obviously, we're not going to do the dishes, but we'll help with if you find the mousse isn't working, the jelly's not working, the tart, whatever it is, we, we will assist everyone on the same same level to help that so that it, we, we basically want everyone to have a great dish, you know, to, to make the competition better, if that makes if that makes sense. Absolutely. So okay. um, we're going to start off by just going through some, um, some very easy sort of, step-by-step -step instructions to, to use um, to use these things. So obviously you don't need to follow the recipes that we're, um, that, that we're giving you, but we'll give you a guideline for quantities that you're gonna, um, going to use and how to get the best from, from the product. So we are going to use um, the gelling agents, the ultra gel gelling agents first off. And we're going to make a coconut um, panna cotta. So I have some coconut puree. Uh, I quite like to use the coconut puree because you can take this to the boil quite easily uh, without it splitting. Um, I find that coconut milk from the tins splits a lot easier than a coconut puree. This is the this is the the one we're using is the Braron um, coconut puree. Um, into that, I'm going to add some uh, soy single. So a lot of the plant-based um, milks are very thin. They're, there's, there's not an awful lot of, of body to them. And one of the things that when Rupert and I started looking at um, sort of doing plant-based um, and vegan dishes was that it really lacked the body of, of, of dairy. And, and certainly when it came to to cream and that kind of thing that we had none of the richness coming from the plant-based milks. Um, and we came across this, which is the Alpro Soy Single. Um, I, I really like this. I, I, I like this one, best of all. I know a lot of people like the Oatly um, Creamy and they do sort of whipping versions and that kind of thing. But I think for a lot of the the sort of panna cottas, mousse bases, and that kind of thing that we do. Ganache. I really, yeah, I really like this. I think it gives um, a really nice sort of richness and, and a nice mouthfeel. Um, so, and, it's, and it's easily available. It's it, all the supermarkets and, and whatnot sell it. So it's not a, it's not a tricky one to get hold of because it's the all pro one. Um, okay, so we've got our um, milk, uh, the coconut milk, and puree in there. Oh, into that, I'm just going to put um, a small quantity of sugar. And then we're going to take that to the boil. With the, with the creams, just to go back, we, we tend to use um, the creative use of plant-based creams, the ones that don't whip. We, we tend to use the ones without a whipping agent because we're going to go through, we, 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 one of the ingredients you've got to use is the ultra whip. And we tend to find if you're using a cream that whips and you've got two whipping agents, they, they, they sort of fighting against each other almost. So we tend to always stick to, even if you decide to use the Oatly, we use the ones that are the single cream, the non-whipping ones, 
because we use a separate whipping agent to whip up another aspect of it. But there's no specification on what milk. Even for the, for the mousses, we found that because the, um, obviously if you're using gelatine to set um, a mousse, then you can add that to something which is cool. And if you whip up um, creams and even the, the non-dairy creams, you whip them up and put something cool into them, they're fine. But if you whip them up and put something hot into them, which is the case when you're using the, the sort of natural um, gelling agents and the plant-based gelling agents, that they need to be um, applied hot, that, that they, you, you, you find you run into issues with the, um, with the plant-based whipping creams. It's quite a minefield with the milks and the creams. Obviously, if you're doing it non-plumbing, you know, you use milk, whether you use full fat or, or semi-skimmed, and you use double or you use whipping cream. When you start going down the plant-based thing, you've got a huge choice of milks to, to use. Um, we, we tend to stick to um, soya milk or, or oat milk primarily are the two that we use most of the time. If we're doing something with nuts in it, like so say we're going to do a macaroon or something like that, then we'll use um, an almond milk because obviously there's nuts in it in it anyway. Um, we do use quite a lot the oat milk, but we tend this one isn't, but we use the gluten-free one to just try and minimize the allergens in the um, in, in the dishes that, that we do. But that bears no no reference to the to the competition, but that is something that, that, that we, we tend to stick to. But soya oat. Um, are, are probably the two the two best ones. Okay, so that's just come to the boil now. Um, so here I have the Ultra Gel 5. The Ultra Gel 5 has a really, um, it's got a good structure, but a really soft eating quality. Um, and, it, and it works perfectly for panna cottas and like custard base type, um, type mouthfeel. Um, so just in order to ensure that the, that the gelling agent is dispersed properly. Just take a quantity of sugar. So it's probably uh, three times your um, volume of gelling agent that you'll need to disperse it in sugar. Um, so here I've got about eight grams, got about 20 grams of sugar. Um, and that'll disperse really nicely. We then, we, it is integral that you add this to a boiling liquid. Um, it can be added to a cold liquid and brought to the boil. So this goes into the boiling liquid and boils for a minute, two minutes. That's quite important that, that once the mix has boiled, you add your gelinated, you then need to boil it for a further minute and a half to two minutes to activate it. Um, and obviously be careful with it because you've got your cream and that, that it doesn't boil over. Um, but that can be what, what, one of the issues why, why this possibly wouldn't have worked if you haven't, if you haven't boiled it. With the, with the panna cottas and things like that, we tend, if you do, um, we've done coconut for this, we always tend to do stronger flavors for the plant-based. When you're using vanilla, it, it is one of the biggest struggles we've had because you tend to find the soya milk, the oat milk, um, overpowers the vanilla flavour. Yeah, so, so you end up with a with an oat milk panna cotta with a hint of vanilla or a soya milk cream panna cotta with a hint of vanilla. So we do tend to, with the plant-based, go for something like coconut. We're going to do a bit of passion fruit. Those kind of flavours to, to, to overpower the, yeah. the plant-based milk flavour. I'm just going to finish this quickly with a, a little piece of lime. Um, just a fine uh, boron uh, coconut quite sweet, so um, just to balance that out a little bit. Okay. So this does set quite quickly for you. Um, it continues to set up. Um, for a little bit after it's, it's set, it sets at about 45 degrees. Um, oh, I was just grabbing some little pots to, to pour some in. Um, 
you can see it's a little bit foamy on the top. You can just hit that with a blowtorch to remove the, the foam, or you can um, just give it a few minutes to settle. So. Look <laughs> how where the thing is. Obviously, you need to just get rid of some of those bubbles off the top. You can just give it a quick hit with a blowtorch and then. Okay, so that's that's the Ultra Gel 5. Um, obviously, any variations that you feel you would like to do with that are, are acceptable, but um, that's one example of, of sort of what we like to do. Um, the next thing I think then we're going to look at was the chocolate mousse. No, passion fruit. Just talk about the passion okay, fruit. Okay, yes. So, so we have um, two types of the Ultra Gels. We have the Ultra Gel 5 and the Ultra Gel 2. The Ultra Gel 5, as I say, brilliant for that sort of creamy mouthfeel, um, that kind of custardy panna cotta style um, gel. Then we have the Ultra Gel 2. So this one we use for, for jellies. Um, for fruit jellies, or balsamic jellies, but whatever. Um, so again, the same rules apply here. We're gonna heat our, our base liquid, add the gelling agent, disperse in some sugar. Um, if you don't wanna add more sugar to it, you're gonna have to disperse it in something like malted dextrin. Um, it, it stops it from, from clumping as, as it hits the, the liquid. Um, bring that to the boil and boil it for a couple of minutes. Oh, we've done a, a passion fruit one, which I'm going to speak to you about. Um, so this is just a, a little trifle um, that we've done. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, so uh, we've done a, a passion fruit jelly to go with this. Now, in order to do a passion fruit jelly that's got uh, a lot of a sort of sharpness to it um it's very important that you don't try to boil the gelling agent in the passion fruit otherwise what you're going to find is that the that the low ph that high acidity in the passion fruit will inhibit the gel from forming so what we do here is to take what i've done is take 200 mils of water um and added the ultra gel and some sugar to that. And then bring that to the boil. Let it boil for two minutes and then add the passion fruit puree. Um, keep that nice and hot and then you can, can work with it. Obviously, if you're adding cold passion fruit puree, it'll start to cool very quickly, but- You can melt all these back down. You can melt all these back down and just bring yeah. the whole thing to the boil. But it just allows it to take quite a nice level of acidity without it affecting the gel structure. And these, th this one, so obviously it's very easy to layer up. Obviously that's been set on, on the angle. So you can layer up the jelly and the panna cotta. Yep. And they, they set really well and don't mix, do they? When you pour, no, no, no. When you pour one onto the other, it's not as tricky as with, with gelatin where one will melt the other, is it? No, absolutely. It's much more, absolutely. Much more stable. Um, if, just in terms of doing something freestanding with these as well. So this is just, again, a little bit of the... Um, the coconut... Right. Yeah. Just take it out. Tray. So one So it will cut and uh, and, and transfer very easily. Um, it doesn't, see, it doesn't stick to the cone foam or anything there as well. So I'm not really able to pick it up with this stupid palette one. Huh. Okay, so this 
stupid palette now. Okay, so that is the Ultra Gels. Thank you. Okay, so that's all. So that's the the ultra gel. What we do is this this recipe booklet that we we have. This will we do that in an electronic format. Uh, and on here is the recipe that we've used. It's a vanilla panna cotta on there, and we just swap the milk and the cream out for different things. So it gives you a a good sort of guideline of of, of what you can do in gel strengths um, with that. Why not? Right. So we're on the chocolate mousse. Chocolate mousse. <clears throat> okay. Um, so this is this is one of my favorite sort of vegan recipes because it's so it's so simple and there's absolutely no way you would know any any difference. Can you just grab no sir? Um, so it, it literally is exactly the same as any other chocolate mousse that you would make. Uh, so what we do here, we're just going to show you the steps for this because um, turning on the mixer will mean that you can't hear us speak. Uh, so into the mixing bowl, put your soy milk, oat milk, whichever you choose. Now into that, we add the ultra whip and an emulsifying agent. And this is quite important because when we look at how um, how an egg behaves, obviously, if you if you're making a pot of bomb base for your for your mousses, you're going to have quite a lot of natural egg lecithins and stuff in there. So, adding an additional emulsifier is quite important to this. So that is a silk gel. Now, I think when when we've been looking at this sort of plant-based movement, silk gels become a, 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 a vital ingredient, this emulsifying agent. Um, so it's a natural plant-based emulsifying agent um, that's widely, widely used in the commercial food industry. Um, so whenever there's kind of water and a fat content yeah. and you're missing out the eggs, you need to replace that. that so like whether it's baking, mousses, whatever, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. So we're just going to put that straight onto um, the machine. Let that start to whisk up like you would do with um, with an egg white. And when it's nice and airy, add your sugar. Beat it for a couple of minutes until you have something like this. There we go. So it looks, to all intents and purposes, like a pot of bombay. Um, I'm just going to boil up some... Um, again, some single soy. So for this mix, we're using a 60% dark chocolate for this. So um, any of the dark chocolates work, work really well. There are also the um, the vegan milk chocolates for, for that, but you tend to find because you're adding the milk and the cream anyway, the dark chocolate is going to give you, give you the best flavour. But you want a good quality chocolate again to to power over the flavour of the soya milk and the soya cream. Okay. okay. Once that's just warmed, add that into the And then we start 
to just fold in the snakes. As you can see, it looks just like I say any other chocolate mousse you've ever made. Um, and just like every other chocolate mousse, because of the chocolate content, that's enough to set it. So there's no need to add any sort of gelling agents or anything to this one either. With that whipping agent, you can see it says lovely and light. Holds up really, really well. And some uh, let Rupert try and find out and get some more there. <laughs> I'll just get that sheet. Sheets. You know, really nice with the sheets. No. What to go under these? Yeah. So this mix, um, sorry, let me swap this camera back. This mousse mix um, is really good. It works. There we go. So it works really well if you want to just set it in a piping bag, put it in the fridge, and then use it as a pipe mousse um, to go at the bottom of a plane or to put something else on top or stick things together. Works really well. Or set it up in um, in ring moulds um, and you can put a filling in. It will take a liquid centre um, or some inclusions or, or anything like that. Um, you could also put a bit of alcohol through it if you wanted to mix that through in the, in the cream when you boil it up. It also works well in the... Um, Silicon moulds, uh, these sort of, the, obviously you have to freeze to demold, but it's it's a firm mix that will um, will will take that um, in, in in there. So we'll just fill some of these up, and you can flatten off the tops easily. Yeah. Or fill or fill those. It, so I'll just swap this over so you can see what a mess I've made here. here, here. So yeah, easily fill the moulds, fill the rings and whatnot. We'll get them out of the way fairly sharpish. See that. One of the um one of the things with the the, the mousses, uh certainly if you make the fruit, the, the fruit mousses. Is they're quite different and they tend to be when when you work with them as they're warm, aren't they? Which yeah. is unusual because the ultra whip, when you whip that up, it's heat stable, so up to 60 degrees. And obviously, you've got to boil your, your plant based gelling agents, um, the ultra gels. So you put that in warm and it won't deflate, so it holds. So, it, so it's quite a different way of working where you would normally fold um, your fruit through your uh, cream and obviously if you did that too warm the whole thing would de deflate so it is a quite quite a different way of um way of working with that um meringues meringues and um, yeah what's that for um, okay okay right, cool so we just we're going to do two well we, we've made some meringues um here to show the, um, the versatility. So this is with the ultra whip. So for this, the ultra whip um, goes into any. Uh, what's up? Okay. Sorry, we got a message up there. Just so you can read that. That we're both a bit short sighted. Um, so the ultra whip, the, 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 this product here, is kind of like replaces aquafaba. So this goes into any liquid. This is what we use to aerate the milk for the chocolate mousse. Um, goes in at 5%, so if you've got 100 grams of liquid, 5 grams of this. So if you're making any kind of meringues, um, so for these, what do you use for the base for these? Milk. Water, passion fruit, puree. So these, strawberry, let me sort these over. So whatever liquid you want to do, um, 
if you can see here, we've got some made. So, so these are passion, passion fruit. Yeah. Um, some of these are made with a soya milk base. You can use water. C completely up to you. Fruit puree through them. Fruit puree. Completely up to you what you you think would work with your with your dish. So it goes in. The ultra whip goes in at five percent. Obviously, sugar in there as well to taste to get that um, texture with with the crunch. And then these are just dehydrated in the oven at eighty degrees for three three four hours. That that kind of thing. Some of these here, these ones, um, Vicky just finished with passion fruit puree. I uh, don't want raspberry. Strawberry. Strawberry puree on the top. But you can get, if you can hear the, the, you get the real crunch and the same texture. You wouldn't know it, isn't it? You, it, no, it, you wouldn't it, question it. It, 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 it isn't. It isn't meringue. Um, with that, it, it's very, very versatile. You can also use it to pipe and then blowtorch, uh, like a lemon meringue pie type type of scenario. Um, for those. Absolutely. That cover that. Yep. Um, so again, we're going to use a, a, a similar format here, and I'm going to make a little um, dacquoise. So we will be supplying you with um, cake recipes. Um, but again, I just want to take you very quickly through um, using the eggless uh, in conjunction with the with the ultra whip. Um, sorry, you just hear me, not, not see yeah. me. Uh, the the, the so, eggless. So the the eggless is a this is a, a really um, a really interesting product for us. Um, so when we started looking at um, the vegan bakery particularly um, and, and went out and bought all these books and had all these recipes and, and a lot of these called for aquafaba and then just replacing butters with oils and, and that kind of thing and on the face of it they all seem very very plausible and we made these cake batters and we then the, the cake batter looked really good put them in the oven and when they came out, they looked amazing and they stood on the bench for five or 10 minutes and they completely deflate. And that's because actually we didn't put anything in there to, to replace the structure. If you think about when you have a, a, a raw egg versus a cooked egg and how dramatically different those two mediums are. Um, so what we could do effectively with the aquafaba and oil and that kind of thing was was replace the raw ingredient um but as soon as we baked it that coagulation that setting of the fats and the proteins in the egg didn't happen and we had to we had to replace that in order to be able to directly replicate um baking without the eggs and without the butter etc um, and, the, and the ingredient that we use for that is the eggless. So there isn't really um, an exact amount of eggless that will replace an egg. It's about looking at each individual recipe and what the egg is doing within that recipe and then working out how much of the eggless that you're going to need to do that. Um, so we will supply you with recipes that will give you a place to start with, with baking and, and making cakes and biscuits and all that kind of thing. Um, so just very, very quickly going to take you through a recipe for a coconut that was. Um, so just for the base of this, you can use um, a, a soy milk or um, an oat milk or whatever, but actually water's fine, absolutely fine. So again, into the, into the mixing bowl with the water, add your ultra whip, that's gonna give you your aeration and your eggless. So again, this is just another little fine powder. So we're gonna whisk the ultra whip water eggless together until that comes right up. And then as I say, like, a, like an egg white, when the um, when the mix is, is fully aerated, you're going to add your sugar, and this is what it will look like. So, very much like a whisked white. Um, 
And then very simply into that, some desiccated coconut and a little bit of flour. Just fold those together. And it really does just look like any other sort of cake batter. Take that until golden and springy to the touch. Takes about 20 minutes at 160. Um, yeah, very simple. that in there now so oh oh wrong one there we go so i was saying just like any other sort of duck was and a cake you will have made um so we showed you earlier a little um glass with the uh panna cotta um, and the, the passion fruit jelly. Now I've actually layered that up with a layer of the couple of layers of the daquas through there as well. And onto the top. Look at this. We're doing something nobody to eat. Um, a little dice of Mango there. And I'm going to put one of the little ma um, meringues, the passion fruit meringues, and a little dice of mango on the top of that. And very simple. Vegan trifle. Um, and then we've got a pineapple upside down cake. Um, again, just following the, the sponge cake recipe that, that you'll get um, from Rupert later on. Um, I've made a, a dry caramel, put that into a tin, lined it with my pineapple, a little sprinkle of desiccated coconut, pour the cake batter on the top um, and bake it. Um, and, and there we go. So I think it's questions time, isn't it? There we go. So hopefully we've covered um, a, a, a sort of introduction to it. Does anybody anybody have any questions? Anything that we've not we've not covered? Anything that you you, you want to know? You want to ask? You turn your microphones on, or you can send them through through the chat box. No one's got any questions, we must have done. We must have answered we all the answer. questions. I'm going to check the chat. There's nothing there. Uh, no. Right. Sorry, just a quick one. With your Ultra Gel 2, um, you mentioned you could remelt it down, but you were layering it with your panna cotta. So is it relatively heat stable? They are. They're, they're, they're heat stable to 45 degrees. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Any other questions? Hello. Hi. Um, how can you dehydrate in advance? What do you have to do it when you get there? Right, would we get marked down for it if we bought it already dehydrated? I think if you um, bring some dehydrated, but then in the competition, make, make the mix yes. to show it. I think that would be would be would be perfect. Fine. So obviously you can make the meringues, uh, bring them pre pre dried, but then join the actual uh, competition. If you could make the mix and, and and talk about what you've used and how you use the ingredients, that's that's perfectly fine. Okay, thank you. Ice cream. Ice cream. We forgot the ice cream. <laughs> 
Sorry, one thing we we forgot to um, to mention the um, yeah. the silk gel works really well for for plant based ice creams. Um, so this is uh, let me just swap this camera over. Sorry, we forgot to mention this. Uh, again, I'm going to send you all the recipe that we use, which is this one, which is for a chocolate ice cream. So by using the silk gel, you can see you can make a really nice, um, easily um, quenellable, quenellable um, chocolate ice cream. Um, that really, I'll be honest, you, you wouldn't really know the difference. Because you're using the chocolate and the flavour of the chocolate, it gives you that luxury and that fat content to, um, to overpower the, the, the plant-based creams. If you try and do things like vanilla, um, they're much more difficult to, to make. But this, the silk gel works really well for that as well. And again, I will give all the recipes. I'll, I'll send to David um, McCown and, and he can forward them through with, with that. But again, if you have any issues with any of them, please let us know and we will assist. Uh, and send out samples and, and whatnot and all of that. Anything else from anybody before we, we finish? Nope. If that's Smashing. the end, we will say thank you very much for your time. Good luck with your um, recipe development and, and, and entries in the competition. We look forward to seeing you all when we come to do the judging and at Skills for Chefs and, and whatnot. And, and hopefully we'll all be, we'll all be there and, and it'll be a great event again. Oh, sorry, we've got another... Yep. Thank you. Brilliant. Smash him. Cheers. Bye-bye. Okay, Have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.